and welcome to the session. This is Professor Farhat. In this session, we're going to be looking at additional itemized deductions, and specifically, we're going to be working with charitable contribution. This topic is covered in an income tax course, CPA regulation section, as well as the enrolled agent exam. As always, I would like to remind my viewers that you, I would like to connect with you on my LinkedIn account, as well as my Facebook account. So I do have a LinkedIn a Facebook account, Facebook page. You want to make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel. This is where I house all my lectures. Please like my lectures if you do like them, share them, put them in playlists so other people can benefit as well. This is my Twitter uh, account and on my website, I do organize my courses by chapters. This recording is brought to you by Jaeger CPA Review. If you like this recording, you can view hundreds of hours of video lectures as well as work thousands of multiple choice questions with solutions, simulations, textbook, including a CPA physical textbook, audio lectures for retention purposes, electronic flashcards, plus other. If you happen to use Jaeger, use the code PMF and you will get 10% off of the best valued course. You would benefit yourself and benefit this channel. So today we're going to be looking at charitable contribution. So what's the overall idea of charitable contribution? Well, the government says we want you, we want to encourage you, we want to entice you to donate. Therefore, what we do, we're going to give you a deduction if you, if you donate. Now this deduction, you have to keep in mind, it's from AGI, not for AGI. So simply put, it's going to go on your itemized deduction, which is Schedule A. This is Schedule A. And we already dealt with medical and dental expenses. We covered taxes. We covered interest. And now we're going to be dealing with this section right here, gifts to charities. So simply put, you can add your gifts to charitable contribution to your itemized deduction. And hopefully your itemized deduction will be greater than your standard deduction. Therefore, you will be able to take the higher, which will be the itemized deductions. So this is the idea of this session. Individuals and corporation, we'll talk about corporation later on in the next course, may deduct contribution made to qualified domestic organization. Now, if you don't know what a qualified domestic organization, go to the IRS and type qualified domestic organization, and they will give you a list of all the organization to which you can contribute and have your contribution deducted for tax purposes. Simply put, if you, give cash or clothing or anything to your needy neighbor that's not that's that's good of you but that's not going to be deductible for irs purposes so it has to it has to go to a qualified domestic organization and they have a list of all of them okay the criteria of gift now the gift will have to have certain criteria well as a contributor you must have donative intent obviously <laughs> you have to have donative intent a donative in intent and you don't expect anything in return so you are giving the gift without not getting anything in return if it's an exchange then guess what it's no longer a donation now if a contribution receive a tangible benefit so if you made a contribution but you receive some benefit some tangible benefit guess what the fair market value of such benefit reduces the amount of the charitable contribution deduction. Simply put, let's take a look at an example. J Jacob purchased a ticket for $100 at a special performance of a local symphony, which is a qualified charity. Okay, so he, he paid $1,000. If the price of a ticket at the symphony is normally $35, well, you paid $100, but normally you can buy it for $35. Well, guess what? You got a benefit. The 35 is the benefit of attending the the, uh, the ceremony. Okay? If that's the case, your benefit is only $65. Even if, even if Jacob does not attend, you only still deduct $65. However, Jacob does not accept the ticket from the symphony. Let's assume you paid $100, but you told them, you know what? Thank you. I'm not attending. Don't give me the ticket. Then you have a full deduction. Why? You'll get the $100 because you did not get any no benefit. You did not get any benefit. But if you accept the ticket, whether you use it or you give it to someone someone else, it does not matter. It reduces your contribution by $35. Okay, let's take a look at another example just to make sure we consolidate this idea. On December 27, Roberta purchased four tickets at a charity bowl sponsored by the city of San Diego for the benefit of the underprivileged kids. Each ticket cost 200 so four times 200 she paid 800 dollars 
the fair value of each ticket is 35. If, sh if you want to buy the ticket itself, it's 35 times 4. And that's going to be 120, uh, 20 plus uh, 120 plus 20, 140. It's going to be 140. So this is the fair value, fair market value. Okay. On the same day as the as the per, as the purchase, Roberta gave the ticket to the minister of her church for personal use uh, by his family. At the at the time of the gift of the tickets, Roberta pledged four thousand dollars to the building fund of her church. We don't have to worry about this. The pledge was satisfied by a check dated December thirty first, but not mailed till January. We don't have to worry about this because this we're going to be assuming we're using cash basis taxpayer. We're not accrual. Okay. So simply put, how much can Roberta deduct, assuming she's a cash basis? Well, she paid eight hundred. But she got a value of 140, so her deduction is 660 dollars. 660 dollars. What else can you contribute to a charity? You can contribute services. Basically, you can spend some time helping the charity. Well, guess what? Hours spend, not deduction. So you cannot go and say, well, you know what? I'm going to do some work for you. I'm going to do five hours worth of work. My rate is 50 dollars. Well, I can deduct two hundred and fifty dollars. So generally speaking, no deduction is allowed for the contribution of service. Now, unreimbursed expenses related to the service are deductible. So if you had to spend something and you are not reimbursed, those are deductible. OK, out of pocket transportation cost. OK, or a standard mileage of 14 cents per mile are deductible. So if you had to drive for uh, certain places for charity for charitable purposes then you can deduct the transportation cost or the standard mileage okay deductions are also permitted for transportation reasonable expenses for lodging the cost of meals while away from the home incurred in performing the, the donated services so although so notice you can take the meal while away okay let's take a look at this quick example grace a delegate a delegate representing her church in Miami, Florida, travels a two-day national meeting in Denver, Colorado. That's in February. After the meeting, that's going to be very cold there, Grace spent two weeks at a nearby ski resort. Under these circumstances, none of the transportation, meals, or lodging is deductible because the travel involved significant element of personal use. So simply put, you have to be there for mainly for donative purposes. You, you're there to help others. Okay. What are some just strictly non-deductible items? The following are not dues fees or bill paid to country clubs lodges fraternity orders or similar groups cost of raffle bingos lottery ticket tuition payment for the right to purchase ticket for seating at an athletic event in a university value of blood giving to a blood bank you cannot denote that deduct that donation to homeowners association gifts to individuals so if you give someone in the gift that's not deductible rental value of property used by a qualified charity rental value that's also non-deductible you cannot say it's deductible okay record keeping now when it comes to charity uh, contribution the irs is very is very much uh, 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 very much concerned about record keeping so you want to make sure to take a deduction you keep proper record keeping no deduction is allowed unless the taxpayer has appropriate documentation and subs substantiation now i'm going to show you on the next slide what are some of those requirements they are very specific we're not, I'm not, I'm not going to go over them in detail. I'm just going to give you an idea what they are. The specific type of documentation required depend on the amount of the contribution and whether the contribution is made in cash or non-cash property. So if you, gave, if you gave cash, how much is the cash? If you gave property, how much is the property and the type of the property? And special rules may apply to gift of certain type of property, for example, used automobile, where Congress has noted taxpayer abused in the past. So people that donate used car, they really abuse this. So what happened is now they strengthen the rules. So simply put, this is a list. Again, if you are uh, if you are interested, you can read it. Just give you an idea. For example, cash gift. A deduction is allowed if the taxpayer has a proper receipt, bank record such as cancel check or written statement from the charity. Okay, a written statement from the charity is required if the payment is more than seventy. Let's talk about let's talk about the type of property you might contribute. Okay, if you contribute cash. There is no issue whatsoever. Whatever cash you contribute, you can always measure how much measure how much you contribute. If you contribute five hundred or five thousand or ten thousand, you could easily measure it. The problem becomes when you contribute something other than cash. What, what can you contribute? You can contribute stocks. You can contribute land. You can contribute building. You can contribute vehicles. You can contribute all sorts of things. 
So what we do is we differentiate between the type of property. You can contribute ordinary income property, or you might contribute capital gain property. So first we have to know what is ordinary income and what's capital gain. Ordinary income property is an asset that would produce ordinary income or short-term capital gain if sold. So this is what ordinary income is. Simply put, it's not long-term capital gain, which is not capital gain property, the other, the other category. So if you do contribute ordinary income property, also that would also include inventory, it's ordinary income property, okay? So the contribution amount, generally speaking, it's the lower of the adjusted basis or the fair market value. And we'll, we'll look at an example. Capital gain property is defined as an asset that would produce long-term capital gain or Section 1231 gain if sold. So it's an asset that you, you held more than a year, long-term capital gain, or Section 1231 gain if sold. Don't worry about what Section 1231 is. We'll talk about this later on. We're going to work on one whole chapter about Section 1231. So the contribution amount for capital gain property, generally speaking, is the fair market value of the asset. And we have two exceptions. We'll talk about the two exceptions later on. Okay. Now, obviously, if the if the base, if the fair market value is lower than the basis, you'd still use the fair market value for this example, but we'll talk about this later. Let's look at an example just to show you the difference between ordinary income or short term and long term. Tim donates stock in White Corporation to university on May 1st. Tim had purchased the stock for 2500 on March 3rd. So notice from March 3rd till May 1st, that's less than a year. So we are dealing with this category here. Um, the and the stock had a value of 3600 so the value is 3600 the basis is 2500 so we have a gain of 1100 okay so we have a short term capital gain of 1100 if we sold it because the short term capital gain property is treated as ordinary income tim charitable contribution deduction is limited to 2500 therefore tim can only take 2500 assume instead that the stock has a fair value of 2300 let's assume he bought the stock at 2,500. When he gave it away, it's 2,300. Then we will use 2,300. So we're not going to give you an additional additional deduction for this. Okay. Therefore, it's the lower of these two. Let's take a look at another example. Liz has an AGI of 130,000 in 2018. She donated Bluebird corp corporate stock with a basis of 10,000. So that's the basis, 10,000 to a qualified contribution on July 5th, 2018. What is the amount that Liz, <coughs> sorry, Liz's deduction, assuming she purchased the stock on December 3rd, 2017. Well, if she bought it on December 3rd and she sold it July 5th, that, that's less than a year. That's ordinary income. And the fair market value of the stock is 17,000. So the fair market value equal to 17. Well, guess what? Since it's short term, we're going to take the lower of the two, the short term, the lower of the two is the basis in this situation. The basis is 10,000. Okay. Assume the same fact, except that Liz purchased the stock on July 1st, 2015. Well, July 1st, 2015, that's going to make it long term capital gain. Long term capital gain, generally speaking, you will take the fair market value if it's higher, which is, which is the, the fair market value, 17,000. In this situation, it's the fair market value. Assume that the same fact in part A, except that the stock has a fair value of 7,500 rather than 17,000. Well, if it has value of 7,500, if this is the fair market value, then you can only take 7,500. You cannot take 10,000. So simply put, if you allow, <coughs> sorry, if you allow taxpayer to take the basis of 10,000, when, when the stock went down to 7,500, what would people do? They will donate all the stocks that they have losses in and they will get a deduction well that's not allowed okay so if your fair value is lower than the basis guess what you're going to go with that fair value you remember in here i said contribution made if it's long term the uh, the generally it's the fair market value but we said we have two exceptions now now we're going to talk about those two exceptions Okay, now let's talk about those exceptions. Exception number one is the fair market value deduction of capital property. Remember what I said, it's generally speaking, the fair market value of the property, okay? Now, for contribution of tangible personal property, tangible personal property is not real property, it's not land and not building, okay? 
your, your contribution may be limited to the adjusted basis if the asset contributed is not used to, in the charity's exempt function. Okay, what does that mean? It means if you donated something to a charity, but the charity cannot use that something. It's not for, for their use. What do they do with it? They usually sell it. If that's the case, then you, you're going to be limited to your adjusted basis. Okay? This reduction generally does not apply if the property, in fact, put into an unrelated use or at the time of the contribution, it was reasonably to anticipate that the property would not be put to an un unrelated use by the donor. Okay, an example will, will, will be something like this. You have an artwork, the fair market value is 100,000, the basis is 10,000. You donated this artwork to the Red Cross. Well, if you donated the artwork to the Red Cross, the Red Cross does not use artwork. The Red Cross, what do they do with this? They are going to sell it. Okay, they're going to go, they're going to go to sell it. In those circumstances, you can only deduct the basis. Okay, but if you donated this artwork to a local museum, okay, and it's going to be displayed for the views, then you can deduct the fair market value. Another example would be something like this. Emma contributes a Picasso painting for which she paid $20,000 to a local museum. She had owned the painting for four years. It had a value of 30000 at the time of donation. So the basis equal to twenty. Fair market value equal to 30. The museum displayed the painting for five years and subsequently sell it for 50. Guess what? The charitable contribution is 30,000. Okay, it's not reduced by the unrealized appreciation because the painting is not, is not put to an unrelated use. It was put to a related use. Although it's later sold, it doesn't matter. They kept that painting for five years in the museum. Therefore, Emma can, can, can deduct 30,000. Now, if Emma gave this painting to the Red Cross, then guess what? Then Emma cannot deduct the 30,000. She can deduct the 20,000. So that's the first uh, exception to the fair market uh, the, the fair market rule. Otherwise, it's if, you, it's, if it's a long-term property, it's the fair market value. Exception number two. Now we have to talk about a little bit about private for-profit foundation and uh, private, sorry, private operating foundation and private non-operating foundation. Now we're going to talk about the second exception to the fair market value deduction of capital gain property. Here we need to learn a little bit more about private foundation. What are private foundation? Private foundation are organizations that traditionally do not receive their funding from the general public. An example will be Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, which is the Microsoft Foundation, Bill Gates and his wife, that's a foundation, that's that's a private foundation. Who, fund, who funds this? Bill Gates and his wife and Microsoft, okay? So foundation falls into two categories. We're going to have operating and non-operating foundation. And we need to know the difference between the two. Private operating foundation. So if it's an operating foundation, it means they spend substantially all their income in the active conduct of a charitable charitable purpose. So we need to know what private, because we're going to be referring to those later. So if it's a private operating foundation, it means it's mainly for charity. Private non-operating foundation, well, deduction for contribution for, to private non-operating must be reduced by the amount of long-term capital gain potential. Okay, that's the contribution for those is limited to the adjusted basis. So if you donated a property to a non-private, non-operating foundation, then you are limited to your basis. Now, if your fair market value is lower, then you'd use the fair market value. Okay, in other words, you cannot get the big deduction contributing that money to a private non-operating non foundation because private non-operating foundation, they don't, they don't spend all their money and the for the charitable purposes. So let's take a look at an example. Ten years ago, Walter purchased a land for eight thousand and held it as an investment. Since then, so this is we're looking at here long term capital gain. If there's a gain, this year when the land is twenty thousand, we have a gain. He donates it to a private non-operating foundation. Guess what? If it's a private non-operating foundation, I'm sorry, you are limited to eight thousand. Now, if instead Walter has donated the land to either a public charity or a private operating foundation, then you can use the fair market value. Okay, so this is the exception here. The exception when he donated this long-term capital gain to a private non-operating, non-operating. Now, let's have a summary of all the ceilings. Simply put, the Congress said, yes, you can contribute money, you can contribute 
stocks you can contribute property but you are limited and congress they used to have three ceilings now we have four ceilings this this is a new ceiling the 60 percent ceiling this is based on the tax cuts and jobs act of 2017. so what can you contribute let's start with this you can contribute cash you can contribute ordinary income property which you know what they are and you can contribute long-term capital property so property that's held longer than a year so let's start with cash when you contribute cash how much cash can you contribute well you can contribute cash to public charities how much can you contribute you can contribute 60 percent of your agi so you can contribute up to 60 percent of your agi in cash to a chair to a public charity and take this deduction if you can this is based on the tax cuts and jobs act and i told you this is no it used to be 50 percent and and congress said look since we are increasing the standard deduction and we are taking away some itemized deduction people may, may not may not be contributing so let's increase their limit to 60 percent so this is the reason for the increase in the limit to encourage people to still contribute so this way if they contribute they can itemize that's why the fear is people would contribute less also if you contribute to private operating charities that's 60 that's 60 percent of your agi now if you contribute cash to non-operating charity you can contribute only 30 the deduct you can contribute as much as you want to you can deduct 30 percent of your agi there's a ceiling okay and there's no issue with value and cash if you contribute cash cash is cash if you contribute ten thousand dollar ten thousand dollar is ten thousand dollar there is no issue with valuation okay so that's cash also you can contribute ordinary income and you can contribute ordinary income to public charities well guess what you are limited to 50 percent of your agi so you can contribute up to 50 percent of your agi of ordinary income to public charity now here we have to know when you do contribute those ordinary income well the basis you will use the basis of the property as the contribution unless fair market value is lower you would use the fair market value because it's lower than the basis you could also contribute to private uh, operating charities you're also limited the 50 percent of your agi again here you would use your basis unless the fair market value is lower if you contribute ordinary income property to private non-operating charities now you are limited to 30 percent okay you can contribute as much as you want to but the deduction you will take is 30 percent of your agi now you could also contribute long-term capital property and you can do so to public charities if you do contribute long-term capital property you are limited to 30 percent of your agi if you contribute long-term capital property to private operating charities you are limited to 30 percent of your agi and remember those use the fair market value those two they use the fair market value you'd use the fair market value because they are long term right generally speaking unless those two exceptions apply if you contribute to non-operating charities here you are limited to 20 percent of your adjusted gross income you are limited to 20 percent of your adjusted gross income now what happened if you contribute more what happened if you contribute more you can carry it contribution that cannot be taken in the current year due to the limitation what we talked about can be carried forward five years you can carry it for five years contribution carried forward retains sir retain their classification for example if a contribution originally involved 30 percent property the carryover will be classified at 30 percent property what do we mean by 30 percent it means it's subject to a 30 percent ceiling so it will be always be 30 percent ceiling okay when when using carryover current contribution are used first then carry carryover used on a, on a first fifo basis first in first out basis okay let's take a look at what happened in the event of a contribution for one taxpayer involved both 50 percent and 30 percent property so what's going to happen is this the first contribution you will take is the one that's allowed for 50 percent so you have two property one is 50 one is 30 first you would use the 50 percent property so let's take a look at an example the taxpayer adjusted gross income is 60,000 contribute two thousand dollar cash and two thousand dollar cash is basically 50 percent property and the land with a fair market value of 30,000 okay well cash actually now it's 60,000 uh, 60 percent now 50 percent okay here's what's going to happen the potential total contribution deduction is 32,000 which is the land of 30,000 plus the cash of 32 okay now remember we are limited there's a 50 percent limit and there's a 30 percent limit 
why the 50% limit? That's 60,000 AGI times 50%. So you can, so assets such as cash is limited to 50%. And you have the 30% limit because the land is a long-term property. It's subject to the 30% limit, which is 18,000. What's, what's 30%? 60,000 times 30% equal to 18,000. So first, the, uh, now what's going to happen first is you're going to take the you're going to take the cash. Okay, current deduction for the land is limited to eighteen thousand. So cash. So the the amount of the deduction is twenty thousand, which is the cash of two thousand, plus the eighteen thousand, which is equal to twenty thousand. So the amount you can you can contribute you can deduct is twenty thousand. Now what's going to happen to the to the thirty thousand minus eighteen? Because remember the the land has a fair market value of 30,000. You have 12,000. What's going to happen to that 12,000? It's going to be carried over as a 30% asset. 30% asset. Ramon had an AGI of 180,000. He's considering making a charitable contribution this year to the American Heart Association, a qualified organization. Determine the current allowable charitable contribution deduction in each of the following independent situation and indicate the treatment for any amount that's not deductible. A cash gift of 95,000. Well, cash gift is 60% of your AGI. So we'll take 180 times 60%. That's gonna give us <clears throat> 108,000. Well, 95,000, it's gonna be fully deductible. So the full amount is deductible. A gift of oak stock worth 95,000 on the contribution date. So this is the fair market value. Ramon had acquired the stock as an investment two years ago. Well, two years ago, that we're dealing here with long term at a cost of 84 capital gain. Okay, so now what we have is we have 95 is the fair market value. 84 is the cost basis. Um, yes, 84 is the cost basis. So we can use the fair market value. Okay, long term, we use the fair market value. Now we have to be careful here because the fair market value, yes, we're going to be used the fair market value, but remember, this is a long-term capital gain, so we are limited. So 180,000, and we are limited to 30% of this. We are limited to 30%. That's going to be give, give us a limitation of 54,000. So we can use 95,000 as a potential deduction, but it's limited to 54,000. That's the only thing we can take this year. So this is current year deduction. And what's left is 41,000. That's going to be carried forward. This is the amount that we can deduct later, and it's 30% 30 30 uh, limitation asset. C, a gift of a painting worth 95,000 that Ramon purchased three years ago for 60,000. So here we are dealing with long term capital gain. The charity has indicated it would sell the painting to generate cash to fund medical research. So we're going to we're going to be assuming here American Heart Association don't have need for the painting. Okay, so it's it, it's not so this asset um uh, it's not going to be put to uh, to use for them. Okay? So it's unrelated use by the charity. This is unrelated use. Now we have this exception. If that's the case, we cannot use the fair market value. We have to use the cost basis since the cost basis is lower, okay? If the fair market value is lower, we use the fair market value, but here is the cost basis is lower. And we also have to keep in mind if there's any limitation as well, but we cannot use the fair market value, okay? If you have any questions, any comments about this topic, there's a lot, lot of, a lot of moving pieces in this topic. And here's a, here, here's a summary of most of it. If I believe, I believe this, you wanna make sure you understand this slide here. Okay, you wanna make sure you understand the slide here. So I did my best to keep it as simple as possible. Uh, but remember, we have cash contribution, we have ordinary income contribution, we have long-term property contribution. We, have, we could contribute three different things to three different properties. Okay, so keep that in mind and these are the ceiling. If you have any questions about this recording, email me. Um, otherwise, if you're studying for your CPA exam, study hard. And if you're studying for your college courses, study hard because you're technically studying for your CPA. If you happen to use my website for additional lectures, please consider donating. Good luck.